it's a very lived thing this record it's been very recorded in many different places at different times with different intentions 1975 records i think always end up being kind of re like truly a collection of songs in the way that stylistically they don't really sit with each other but that's because they all have their own kind of mini objective within it so to speak of a broader idea apart from what I speak about in particular moments is really difficult um, but I think whatever that is what my intention was will probably become clearer once it's out because it might not even really be for me to say do you know what I mean we did produce the whole thing I mean we were producers whatever that is before we did um the, our first record, I mean, we were like 21 years old, we'd been in the band since we were 13. The idea of just being a band had kind of fizzled away anyway. We started kind of working in that world and I think we've just built confidence with the first two records. And it's a, a dueling idea, isn't it? Like being a producer, you have to have creative ideas, but you also be, have to really be good within the form, recording, like understanding those kind of things. So we just spent the past couple of years just really understanding our craft and then found ourselves with the ability to just kind of do it ourselves. And it wasn't like we felt that like we would have our wings clipped with Mike, but like I said, the process was so all over the place, recording at my flat at two in the morning and then George's house and all these kind of things. It, 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 it would, wasn't really conducive to have another create yeah another another element in there I couldn't be more in love is a song that was written at the end of the session for the second record so I like it when you sleep and that was the thing that I think carried through we knew that we had this kind of song that we loved a song song as we call it do you know what I mean like a proper song and it, I suppose that became a bit of a benchmark, if the benchmark was like conviction. Like, because I listened to it and I was like, right, well, I believe myself. Do you know what I mean? I believe that. So that was kind of, that became the underlying idea for what, what stayed and what didn't. That's a bit, the, the, we've worked with them a couple of times. I mean, there's quite a lot of gospel on the last record because there's a lot of me kind of discussing my struggles with kind of faith and all those kind of things so it's already always been there i mean they're amazing they're they're pros do you know what i mean i think that it was just like with every record every 1975 record we want it to be kind of a a distillation of what preceded it do you know what i mean like like a an exaggeration of everything that was there so the the poppy moments get poppier the heavier moments get heavier etc etc so it wouldn't have really been for me, a rec uh, one of our records without them kind of on it. And people like Roy Hargrove, the trumpet, the cornet player, uh, the flugelhorn player who played on um, I first heard of him through like uh, Voodoo by D'Angelo and records like that. And we were lucky enough to have him play on the last record, play on a brief inquiry a bunch, and actually play on our on our next record, which isn't which is going to come out next year. And he died like last week and um it's been really it was it's just been really sad because it was the first time any kind of any of that has graced our music that we've lost somebody who's been so intrinsically involved so it's a lot of it now for me is a kind of dedication to him because we learned a lot from him we really did learn a lot about melody and and stuff from him well i've i really i kind of had a um profound and not profound revelation where I realized that like it's not a very even a very interesting point to make when I say like let's say outside of this communication that we're having now me and you face to face talking that all of our communication is kind of uh, mediated through the internet it's just going to happen on the internet whether it was like me ringing FaceTime in Jen to find out where to come here or like talking to my girlfriend or like, you talking to your mates or whatever it's not even an interesting observation to say, oh, well, that all happens on the internet. We just know that. But like 10 years ago, if you said to somebody, every single moment of communication that exists outside of one-to-one -one is going to be through the internet, that's how total its presence will be. That'd be a very strange idea. And I think we would pose questions like, why? Do, what have we... Have we really thought about it? What's it gonna do? We, we just go with these things and we just let them happen. It's a big kind of social experiment. So I realized that 
If I'm writing a record about relationships and the way that they work and the minutiae or the minutiae, I never know how to say that word, um, that is presented with those things, you are inherently writing a record about the internet. You can't not. Like I said, it feels quite profound and also not profound at the same time to know that because it's so part of our reality. But it is weird because it means what does that mean in 30 years? What does that mean in 10 years? It's just a strange reality that we're, that we're so used to and so total. Um, so I think the ideas of like asking questions about those things, I'm not, a very, I'm not a very opinionated person in my music. It may come across that because I'm quite like passionate about ideas that I hold dear to me, but I'm really just asking questions. Is this weird? Should we be doing this kind of shit? Like, am I right? Like, I'm never saying like, I'm never judging or saying, yeah, or no, you're wrong. Or, I'm just kind of asking questions. And then, um, so that's what it, I wanted it to be an outward record. Cause I just want to know, do you know what I mean? I'm not, I don't have any answers, but I've got a lot of questions. We're very much brothers in the essence of everything outside of blood, what a brother could mean. I don't know anybody who's as close to their actual siblings, well maybe a few people as we are to one another, you know, starting on this process at like 13 years old. It's difficult, the kind of apprenticeship into adulthood, like when you're like one Peter Pan is difficult enough, but four, like really feed off each other, you know, like you become popular or whatever or celebrated at 23, it's like stay 23. But if four of you are doing that and you're all best friends and then you all have to grow and then like, you know, drugs and all these things ha just kind of happened, you know what I mean? You try and figure it out. And we've just, we've really, really got each other's backs and we learned kind of like how intrinsically loyal we are to each other because those things were tested and it wasn't even really a question. So that's been an amazing revigoration process to be with each other for so long and to feel kind of stronger or closer than ever. Yeah, I think that we've just all learned that it's, it's easy to be like sardonic and ironic and sarcastic. It's easier to be like that than to be like soppy and naive and like really human. So we're just trying to focus on kind of being a bit more like that. Do you know what I mean? Cause it's easier to like be like about everything. Do you know what I mean? So I think we've learned sincerity from each other. I mean, probably that's probably about as much as I can tell you about it. That it's coming out next year. I mean, like we haven't even put out this record, and I'm very much. If it was up to me, like we wouldn't even be talking about this record. I would be letting me talk about the next one. So I have to try and get it right. I mean, I don't know. I look back on things that I was said about Brief Inquiry a year ago, and it's just bullshit. Like it's just not even. It's just complete conjecture. So I think that's all it would be. But um, we always go back somewhere, like a period in our life where we were listening to one type of thing or like there's a very visual, a very memory-based visual paradigm to kind of draw from. And this is kind of like the whole project of both albums is under the umbrella of music for cars. And the consumption of kind of like dance music and ambient music in the UK in smoke-filled cars and not in pubs because you weren't old enough to get in. That's a very, very, very big part of my life and that's a big thing we've been drawing from. So I think a lot of people who come from that or even don't come from that um, will, will really engage with it. I didn't need to be from Chicago to love John Hughes movies, so I'm sure it'll be, it'll be a thing. I don't give a f I have to not do that because then I'll get so nervous about stuff. <laughs> for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more videos from your favorite artist. While you're here, check out these other videos.